remember the 1st of May is May Day, and that's where, when I was young, we actually did a maypole dance and everything. It was really fun. But you guys are way too young for that. All right. Uh, today, remember, you have to, uh, you have to do, <laughs> oh, wait a minute. What did I do here? Yes, it is. Okay. Wait a minute. Got to turn it over. All right. Number, oh, wait a minute. Did I get the thing? Yeah. Takes Miss Tasha a while to get ready. All right. Uh, it's a story, the theme is story time is Mother's Day theme today. And you have to remember, what does Miss Tasha love to wear purple and of course my wonderful what do i love to eat i love chocolate and my infamous voice now this one won't be quite as bad but the the one that i'm going to do for my second reading this month the, my voice is going to come out okay all right here we go uh first one because it's the theme is mother's day it's me and my mom it's by Allison Ritchie, illustrated by Alisa Edison. Copyright is 2020. The publisher is Little Tiger Press Incorporated. And it is so cute, guys. All right, ready? All right. Me and my, uh, my mom are together all day. I follow her footsteps as we go out to play. We make strings of flowers, and Mom is so clever that her daisy chain seems to go on forever. <laughs> we roar in the cave, and it answers our call with magical echoes. One big and one small. Because here's grrr, and here's grrr, because he's a little, little bear. Oh, we know a good trick, my Mommy and me. I balance one apple. And my mommy can do three. We glide through the water and I make a wish that one day, like mom, I will swim like a fish. With a showery spray, my mom dries her fur. I wiggle my bottom and shake just like her. <laughs> it's a long way to jump. I'm not sure if I dare but I know I'll be safe with my mommy right there. She's ready to catch him. My mom is so special in every way. I want to be just like my mommy one day. Isn't that a nice one? I love that one. Okay, now from mom, we are going to grandma's. <laughs> because up here, there's an awful lot of grandparents that take care of their kids and that see their kids. So you have, we have to, have, in fact, I have two grandma stories. Okay. What grandmas do best. Okay. It's by Laura Numeroff, illustrated by Lynn Munsinger. Copyright is 2000. Uh, publisher is Simon and Schuster books for young readers. Okay. Here we go. What? And you know what? I'm going to ask you, even though I can't see you, I'm going to ask you what kind of animals they are. Okay, what kind of animals do you think these are? Can you, can you figure it out? Because they're going to be on another one, too, so I won't tell you. Grandmas can play hide-and-seek and make you a hat and take you for a walk. So what do you think the animal is? It's a kitty cat. It's a kitty cat, yeah. Okay, now we have a new a a grandma. Grandmas can paint with you. Oh my gosh, how many of you have fun just putting your hands in and the paint and just making, oh yeah, it's lots of fun, I know. Show you their photographs of them long ago. And they teach you how to dance, which you all need to know how to do, you know, is to know how to dance. And grandmas can take you, oh, now we have a new one. Oh, okay, but what were these? These were... I think, I don't know whether they're mice or rats. Let's say mice instead of rats, okay. Well, grandmas can take you on a picnic. This is easy. You should know what these are. And they show you some magic trip tricks. And they help you fly a kite. And, of course, they are what? Froggies, froggies. 
Now, grandmas can take you to the beach, and you can tell by the eyes what kind of animal this is. They help you build a sand castle. And I like this. They take a nap with you because grandmas get tired too. Okay, and what were these by the eyes? They're raccoons. Yes, they're raccoons. Grandmas can play games with you. Okay, this is easy to see. I don't know what kind of card game they're playing, but they're having fun. Oh, there's cookies and milk too, you know. They give you a bath. <laughs> and they sing you a lullaby. Okay, what kind of animal this time? Doggy. A little doggy. She's a little puppy. Yeah. But best of all, Grandmas can give you lots and lots of love. And if I turn it over, which I probably will in June, I'm going to do what grandpas do best. <laughs> okay, you know what, guys? This is all fine and dandy, but it's hard for Miss Tasha to see when I have that on. Now, the next time I do reading, I'm going to have a whole bunch of hats. Oh, this is wonderful. This is The Meanest of Meanies, A Book About Love, by Kristen Hensley and Jen Smedley, illustrated by Paul Briggs. Copyright is 2021. The publisher is HarperCollins Children's Books, a division of HarperCollins Publisher. Oh, my word. You talk about a mean mom. You are not going to believe this. Okay, here we go. But it is, a, it is a book about love, just to let you know. Okay. The meanest of meanies. Okay, here we go. Hey, dudes and dudettes, let me set up the drama. I am the kid. And that lady is my, look at a picture of her, is my mama. <coughs> okay, this is exhibit A. All right. Bossy stuff. She dances. She's loud. <gasps> She's loud? Oh my God. Too much energy. Hmm. Now, some moms are loud. Mm -hmm. Some live for caffeine. That means their coffee. Some moms enjoy hiking, but my mom is mean. Mommy wakes me up with tickles and turns on the light. Does she look like, and I like her because, of course, she's a little purple monster. And what does mom have? Of course, coffee breath. She kisses me with coffee breath. So rude, am I right? Then I slump into the kitchen where she's singing a song. She makes me my breakfast, but she does it all wrong. Breakfast one is too bright, okay, because it has blueberries and strawberries and everything. Breakfast two is too scary. Burnt toast and it looks like broccoli for breakfast? Blech. Breakfast three is nearly right, but the eggs look sort of hairy. <laughs> okay, because, of course, who's looking at, the, at it, the dog? Get dressed. It's school pictures. An unpleasant surprise. Remember, no scowling, no frowning, no crossing your eyes. She puts balm in my hair. It makes me look greasy. My shirt is too itchy. And the uh, creases too creasy. <laughs> She's trying to make her look nice, you know. Well, the drive to school is brutal. We are a whole seven blocks away. I don't want to be happy, Mom. I don't want a great day, as she's yelling to them. Well, we heard, we, we head to the jury, uh, gymnasium uh, after math, robotics, and art. The microphone is ready for the spelling bee to start. Oh, she's number nine. Oh, boy. Oh, no, it's my mom in the very front row, and she's holding up a sign that says, Go, kiddo, go! <laughs> After all that hoopla, I only come in eighth place out of, well, there was 14 people anyway. But my mom is there cheering like it was an Olympic track race. At lunchtime, I sit with grumbles in my tummy. I open my lunch bo box to all kinds of cool yummies. All four food groups are there with love, a love note mixed in. Have a great day, schmoopy poopy. That's what she calls her daughter. 
OMG, so cringy again. <sighs> After school, it's not over. In fact, it's more confusing. Mom says one thing, does another. I don't find it amusing. Be careful, little one. Water can be a danger. But then she makes me take swimming twice a week with a stranger. Uh, not a stranger. I'm Todd, the swim instructor. Well, at home, she's a nutball. Leave your shoes at the door. Ah, ooh, where's your bug? Where's your bag? Did Do your homework. Get your toys off the floor. Oh, jeez. When it's finally time for dinner, she really gets in a tizzy. Wash your hands now. Look, lady, my hands are all busy. And what's she doing picking her nose? Oh, God. I bolt to my chair. This meal is my jam. Milk, blueberry, muffins, and beef stew. More. Yes, ma'am. Her mom made a good dinner. I know it's a bribe, so we can chat while we eat. She asks a gazillion questions like an interrogation in heat and then has an asterisk. And yes, heat was the 1995 crime drama, Heat. I finally get some me time, in quotes, but it's like nobody cares. While I'm watching TV, she's vacuuming the stairs. So she can't really hear with the roar. Oh boy, here it comes, the dreaded Bedtime routine. This is the part where mommy's the meanest of mean. Bath, books, and bed, she says with hands on her hips. She says it like 500 times until she has very thin lips. Mommy puts me in the tub. She wants my pooper to be clean. Now all my toots smell like lavender. Are you kidding me? So mean. Once out of the bath, it's time for nighty nights. I keep telling that woman they're getting tidy tight. You're growing so fast, and then her lips start to shake. If you want me to slow down my growth, then let me eat cake. We get into bed, my favorite half hour. I select 82 books, <laughs> piling them high on as a tower. Mom is so mean that we only read four, but I'm so awed by her character voices that she gives me an encore. <laughs> On my back, she draws wiggles and squiggles. She calls me sh Schmoopy Poo. Okay, that isn't so mean. It's just something that we do. She kisses my forehead and puts her cheek next to mine as I roll into Sleepy Town. My heart lights start to shine to mom. Someday, I will have a kid of my own. <laughs> and mark my words, when I do, I'm going to be the meanest mom of all. Because being mean means I love you. Remember that, kids. When your mama's mean, it's because she loves you. <laughs> Okay, very good. Oh, now I have to do another <laughs> another grandmother one. Oh my gosh, you guys, you are not going to believe this. <clears throat> okay, this book, it says Bargain Books. This book <clears throat> is, uh, i got got to do it. Name, Nana the, Nana the Great Comes to Visits. It was donated by the Jackson Save Mart. And I kept it because I knew I had to read to you guys about Mother's Day. So I said, oh, I'm keeping this because this is about grandma's. It's by Lisa Ton Bergen, illustrated by David Hahn. Hohn? H-O-H-N? I don't know. Copyright 2022. Publisher is Waterbrook. An imprint of Random House, a division of Pen Penguin Random House. It, <clears throat> right on the back it says, Nana the Great comes to visit, offers a joyous, energetic celebration of the countless and unique ways grandparents Help children gain confidence and assures children that a grandparent's love will stay with them always. Are you ready? Here we go. Oh, my God. She's kind of dressed. She even has purple on. Oh, my gosh. Here it goes. I love my Nana. 
and I love when she comes to visit. And though Mama thinks she's kind of naughty. Fort not Nana and me, no brothers allowed. And he's out there banging things away. Nana, look at this huge mess you made, Mama says. You're as naughty as the kids. Or I'm a fort building genius, Nana, the great replies, winking at me. Definitely a genius, I say. Mama just sighs and laughs as she heads to the kitchen. Like me, Nana hates poopy diapers. They make us gag. Oh, no, no, she whispers to me. I raised my own kids and I have already changed 10,462. Oh, no. Oh, wait, she says, tapping her chin. Make that 10,463 poopy diapers in my life and I don't think I can face one more. My Nana is really great at math because she's handing the little boy off to the mom. Well, the father's there. He's going to help change the diapers. Well, Nana puts a little sugar on our tomatoes from the garden and feeds them to me as a snack. Make some taste better, she says. Have you ever had sugar on your tomatoes? Try it sometime. Uh, Nana great, is great with fashion, too. She uses 20 different bottles of polish to paint my fingers and toes. Mmm, Mama says when she sees this, do you think you might be getting a little carried away? Not at all, Nana exclaims in delight. When is the color a bad thing? I suppose variety does make the world a bit brighter, Mama says. <laughs> oh my gosh, look what she's done to the little girl. Instead of laying out my clothes each morning, Nana lets me make my own choice. Okay. She has shorts, she has a cute dress, and then she has rain boots on. They look like bunny, no, they just, yeah, they're bunny rain boots, okay. Here, she has striped socks, really nice black leather shoes, and then she has a stocking cap, which is, of course, part purple, so it's got to be okay. Over here, my goodness, she does her hair up crazy, and oh my word, look at what she looks like now. Even the little boy looks funny. Well, instead of laying, okay, I enjoy seeing your sense of style emerge, she says. You have such flair. Well, Nana encourages me to climb as high as I can at the playground. When Daddy gets worried, she says, if the child doesn't try, how will she know how far she can go? Taking a deep breath, I climb to the very tippy top. And Nana helps me make a ginormous hotchkop, hotchkop, hopscotch pass down our block using whole boxes of chalk. Then she breaks out her old pom-poms and cheers us along the way. She doesn't mind when other adults stare. <laughs> oh my goodness, look at that hopscotch. Now that is a good hopscotch. I think I even amused Mr. Cornelius, she whispers after we pass him. He's kind of handsome when he smiles. Well, then Nana lets me try on all her makeup and tells me I look glorious. I'm not sure what glorious means, but I'm pretty sure that it is. Oh, my gosh. And of course, there goes the little brother. you got to watch him at all times. Nana is great at playing checkers, but she never lets me win. If I pout, she says, keep working at it. Someday, someday you'll beat me fair and square. Won't it feel better than pretending, me pretending that you won? I'm not sure, but maybe she's right. And of course, the little boy is just eating cookies. Now and then, I have to let Nana, Nana play with my baby brother. Come on, sweet pea, she said, pulling me closer. He's not all bad, is he? Just look at those chubby cheeks. I guess he's kind of cute, I mumble, but inside I really want Nana all to myself. That's okay, she whispers, like, like she can read my mind. There's plenty of me to go around, and somehow it works out. And there they are throwing water balloons at him. <laughs> Nana sometimes sneaks me dessert before dinner. Just be sure your folks see you eat all your veggies, she says quietly, and we'll be good to go. 
<laughs> Nana keeps adding water and bubbles to my bath at night, and she says, all we need is a little more fizz in our lives. One time she used up all of the hot water in the house. Oh my gosh. You're worth all the hot water and more, precious girl, she said. Well, when Nana prays with me, she says, I don't have to close my eyes. You can talk to God any way you wish. You can kneel or stand, or you can sit on your window and talk to him while you stare at the stars in the sky. My favorite way to pray is to dance, she says, praising him for everything and everyone around me. When Nana visits, she reads me bedtime stories. Afterward, if I can't sleep, I sneak into her room. She always has more reading adventures stashed beneath her bed. And there they are, underneath reading. Oh, there's the books. Well, when Nana gets ready to leave, I start feeling sad. You really love your Nana, don't you, Mama? I get asks. Yeah, I know you think she's naughty sometimes. Well, I actually think she's naughty in the best sort of way, Mama says. That's why God gave us grandparents. <laughs> Somehow they know exactly how much spoil spoiling we need. Even before Nana the Great hugs me goodbye, I start counting the days until she returns. I'll be back as soon as I can, kiddo, she says. But while we're apart, know that my heart is always with you. Dear kids, keep this until my next visit. And that's her beautiful necklace that she made. Isn't that a good one? I know. <sighs> All right. I have to end with this one. This is hysterical. I, I, one of my favorite books is this one. Now, the next set that I'm going to read to you guys is some of my favorite books that I've had in the past because I just thought, oh, I love them so much, I have to do them again. This would have been on the list, but I'm reading it because it's Mother's Day. <clears throat> I love you, stinky face by Lisa McCourt, illustrated by Sid Moore. Copyright is 1997. The publisher is Cartwheel Books. It's an imprint of Scholastic Incorporated. Are you ready for the finale? All right, here we go. Mama said, I love you, my wonderful child. But I had a question. Mama, what if I were a big, scary ape? Would you still love me then? If you were a big, scary ape, I would make your birthday cake out of bananas. And I would tell you, I love you, my big, scary ape. But mama, but mama, what if I were a super smelly skunk and I smelled so bad that my name was Stinky Face? Then I'd plunk you in a bubble bath, but if you still smelled stinky, I wouldn't mind. I would whisper in your ear, I love you, stinky face. But mama, but mama, what if I were an alligator with big sharp teeth? Then I'd buy you a bigger toothbrush. And, you, and if your throat hurt, I'd look inside your huge mouth and I'd say, I love you, my dangerous alligator. But mama, what if I were a terrible meat-eating dinosaur. Well, then I'd make you a mountain of hamburgers to eat, and I'd say, I love you, my sweet, terrible dinosaur. Look at that. <laughs> and you notice he does have purple, purple dots, purple spots on him. I know, thought I'd let you know that. But mama, but mama, what if I were a swamp creature with slimy, smelly seaweed hanging from my body? Then I would live by the swamp, and I would take care of you always. I would tell you, I love you, my slimy swamp monster. See the hearts, little hearts going toward the, ooh, he really is pretty gross looking. But mama, but mama, what if I were a green alien from Mars, and I ate bugs instead of peanut butter? Then I would fill your lunchbox with spiders and ants and the tastiest bugs you ever could have. And I'd pack a note with all the bugs and said, I love you, little greenie. Bon appetit. That's French for good eating. But mama, but mama, 
What if I were a one-eyed monster? Then I would look right into your one eye and say, I love you, and I would sing to you until your one eye droopy eyelid finally closed and you fell fast asleep. Of course, he has a little bunny that he's holding on to. I love you, Mama, and I love you, my wonderful child. Okay, I haven't done this for a long time, I realized. Oh, Miss Tasha does have uh, some brain, mm -hmm, I won't say what it is. I have a challenge. When I first started, I always had a challenge for you every single time, and I thought, ah, it's time for me for another challenge because of Mother's Day. All right, here is your challenge. Are you all ready? I know you can do one of these. There's three choices. What can you do for your mom or your grandma on Mother's Day? Number one, you can make them a card, like they did on that one that said, you know, I love you, mom, okay? Number two, you can paint your mom or your grandma's toe, toes and nails and yours to match. So you could go and paint their toenails. Not their hand, but their toenails. Or number three, you could give your mom or your grandma, if you're with her all day, a hug and a kiss every hour from when you get up until bedtime on Mother's Day. And every time you would say, I love you. You could do all three. Card, paint the toenails, and tell your mom or your grandma that you love them. Doesn't matter. I think that's a good idea. Okay. I will be back in just a jiff, and it seems like just a jiff, and I will be telling you some fun stories that I have had, that I have read in the past. All right, see you later.